what's up? It's Valencia Cardoso from Social Content Arabia, and I'm here with Lola Lopez from Volunteer in Dubai. Hey, Lola. Hey. Thank you for joining me. I know yes, you're very, very busy. It's an understatement? It's definitely an understatement, but it's fine. It's my choice. It's, it's good. Um, thank you for being here. And I was going to start, we'll start off by saying, um, would you be able to briefly describe what Volunteer in Dubai does? Um, so uh, there's no briefly describing it, to be perfectly frank. There's so many areas that, and, and projects that we're involved with and things that we're trying to achieve. In a nutshell, if I had to describe it in a nutshell, we're here to engage the community in worthwhile projects um, that they can donate their time to. So we try and um, create projects, we try and find projects, um, which is hard in an environment like Dubai that doesn't have the social problems that someone like London or New York might have. Um, it's actually quite hard to keep 12,500 volunteers happy. Okay, well, going back to the start, uh, what inspired you to start Volunteer in Dubai? Uh, wanting to volunteer myself, but not finding anywhere that wanted my help. And I found it impossible to believe that I couldn't help in any way, um, any organization or any cause. So um, I started my own project, um, which created the need for volunteers. Uh, I recruited some people to help me as a volunteer effort, and so many people came forward to, to offer help that it became very apparent that I wasn't the only person that felt the need to contribute to their community but not know how to go about it. Cool. And uh, what are some of the current projects that you're working on? You know, I get asked that question a lot, and considering that I developed all of them, they should be able to roll off the tongue, but I always forget one or two. Um, let me try and start in alphabetical order. Okay, we've just relaunched Aid in Motion, which is a clothing collection drive. Uh, we collect clothing all around the city with the help of volunteers. Um, those uh, clothing, uh, they get collected and then they get redistributed in uh, less or lower income areas, less privileged areas of Dubai. Um, then we've got the Braille Books Project. We type up books for blind students in Cairo. Yeah. That's what's actually happening today. Yeah. Um, we get scanned copies of books that are unavailable. Um, in Braille, uh, they get scanned and sent to us in JPEG format and then we type them out in soft copy and Word document. Wow. Email it back to Cairo and then they can print it off on a Braille printing machine. Uh, we've got the Care for Cancer project, which is uh, a project that provides companionship and comfortable travel for different uh, chemotherapy patients. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of patients here that are suffering from cancer and going to hospital alone. Yeah. spending hours and hours alone in hospitals and then getting taxis after their, their treatment. Um, that just didn't seem right to me, yeah. uh, that people should be going through that alone. So we try and provide volunteer companions. Uh, we have, good lord, you see now I'm starting to forget. What else do we have? We have the Dubai Animal Rescue Center. Mm -hmm. Once or twice a week we go and help clean up an animal sanctuary. Um, that's been very, very popular, very popular with volunteers. Then we have the Karama Canteen. Yeah. Uh, the Crama Canteen's been going for three and a half years now. We provide, it, the project's developed as it's gone along, but it started off by volunteers cooking yeah. um, big uh, amounts or big servings of food that we take to labor camps. Um, for many different reasons, we had to abort that, that mm -hmm. uh, operation. It, it got too difficult. Yeah. Uh, then there were Ministry of Health concerns that, you know, yeah. an unlicensed entity was providing food. But there are, you know, health risks attached to that. Yeah. And we didn't want to, you know, be ever to blame for anybody not being well, should we say. So um, now we've partnered with a catering company that oh, wow. provides all yeah. our catering at cost, sometimes for free. Um, so we now provide sponsored dinners for labor camps and abandoned labor camps specifically. Uh, we This past weekend, we launched Pass the Glass, which is an initiative yes. to raise awareness for um, health and hydration of workers. It's not so much about giving them water, um, although that's the practical side of it. It's more about raising them, uh, raising their alertness to signs within their own body mm -hmm. that can warn them of being severely dehydrated. Pretty interesting. Uh, it, it, it's, for not wanting to be gross, there's a color chart yeah. that we hand out. Um, it, there's, it's been translated into four different languages, mm -hmm. so hopefully we're covering the majority of demographics. Yeah. Um, and that color chart is supposed to be an indication to workers um, to be able to do a, their own health screening yeah. um, and tell if their body's dehydrated. You can have liver failure, you can have kidney failure, you can have a lot of uh, medical conditions that come as a result of severe dehydration. Yeah. 
Um, so it's not just about giving them water, um, it's not just about giving them hydration advice, but it's also about letting them know that, that somebody cares about them, to be honest, yeah. that they're not invisible. Um, after past the glass, good lord, what else do we have? Um, I should know this, but there's so many projects. Um, ah, the, the blood bank. Oh, every, that's a really good one. Yeah, every month we hold the blood bank at Ibn Battuta Mall. We're hoping to go bi-monthly now. It's a no-brainer. Uh, we simply bring the blood bank to the people at convenient times. Uh, we engage volunteers in making uh, awareness campaigns in the community to let them know that there's going to be a blood donation camp. Um, so that's the blood bank. What else do we have? Well, I can There's more. On. I know there's more. There's 14 and I can't... Well, I've been a volunteer myself, so I should know a few. Um, but uh, speaking of being a volunteer myself, um, when I was volunteering with you guys... Like, ah, the pink book sale. There you go. There you go. There's another one. We collect books. So we have volunteers running around the city collecting books. Mm -hmm. Those books then get sorted and priced and then they get sold to raise money for breast cancer. Oh, yes, there's another one. Thank you for reminding me because I remember seeing you at the last one. So, what the one before that? And speaking of seeing me at uh, at uh, one of the volunteer by events, like I've I've been to a few, and every time I attend one of them, I I tend to have one of these wow moments, right, where I take a step back and I just realize the amount of impact that you're making. Have you had any wow moments yourself? Can you think of any? Um, uh, there are too many potentially to pinpoint one. Um, just... for, for me, I always get a wow moment when I see how quickly the community responds to a call of help. And when I post an event on my website that requires help uh, of a volunteer in some way, shape or form, the average response time is two and a half minutes mm -hmm. for somebody somewhere to come back and say, wow. I can do that, or I'll help with that, or I'll volunteer for that. Um, and that's, that's always a wow moment, always. Um, I've just thought of another one, and that always gives me a wild moment. We've got a new project called Helping Hands, mm -hmm. which provides um, volunteers uh, they, to, to go and help with housekeeping at a residential care home. Wow. Um, so they help with the ironing, they help with cleaning the windows, they, they help with making the beds for the children. They get involved in any housekeeping needs that that residential care home requires so that the therapists it's not the job of the therapist. The yeah. therapist should be working with the children, not ironing their clothes. And the idea is to save the therapist's time, save the center money, so that the, the time and the money can go to the, the kids that need it the most. Of course, yeah. So volunteers go every week and iron piles and piles of clothing. And I always get um, uh, a, a wow moment with that, because I always thought to myself, who would want to iron someone else's clothes? Like when I launched the project, I thought no one's going to buy this. Yeah. I, I don't even, I, I, I honestly don't. I yeah. purposefully buy clothing that I don't have to iron because I hate ironing. And I launched it with real fear that it was going to be a complete flop. I, I honestly thought this, no one's going to sign up for this. And every week, 15 to 20 people sign up to come and help to iron kids' clothing. And that, that to me is... Um, that's quite amazing, yeah. actually. So that's a wow moment. Another wow moment that I had was when I realized that we have 119 different nationalities. Wow. that are volunteering with us. That's really um, cool. It's, it's some new software that my the back the backside of my my website can tell me. It's information and statistics that it tells me now. Um, and I didn't realize it was that many. You've got so a lot, lot of nationalities. Um, we're about 12 and a half, 13,000 now. Thousand, yeah. wow. Thousand, yeah. And moving forward, um, how, are you, how would you like Volunteer in Dubai to evolve? You know, I'd like to take on more projects. I'd like to be able to engage more people. Yeah. Um, we're merging all the websites now, so it's going to become Volunteer in the UAE. But that's mainly so that it, from an administrational point of view, it simplifies, uh, it, simplifies yeah. it for me. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I'd love to take on more projects and find a... Uh, how do you choose your projects? Well, some of them we've conceptualized. and We've thought, this is something that we can do. Um, a lot of the time, some of the projects that we do in the event, the, the way in which we execute them, we go the long way about it in order to engage more people. An example would be, pass the glass. The way we did it this last weekend is we put four volunteers in different cars. So we had 25 cars, I think it was, and about three to four volunteers in each car. And their job was go to, to go to different parts of Dubai and hand out water with a trunk full of water, a trunk full of leaflets, the hydration leaflets, and go around to different areas in Dubai. 
I could have very easily asked the water company to meet me at a construction site and 15 volunteers to meet me at a construction site and hand out all the water in one place. Yeah. But that would have only required 15 people. My role is to provide as many volunteer opportunities to the volunteers that are members of our organization. Yeah. Um, that sometimes makes life a lot harder for me because I have to complicate um, the administration and the, the execution of a project to be able to accommodate more people. But I genuinely believe that if people want to do good things, yeah. that should be embraced and encouraged and um, maximized. Yeah. So it makes my job a lot harder. But if, it, if, if more people go home at the end of the day feeling that they did something good to help another person, then hopefully that's going to start changing community culture. Yeah. And how easy is it for people to get involved with you? I, I'm, I'd like to think it couldn't be simpler. You know, it, you sign up as a member and you just have to keep checking the website for opportunities. Um, you sign up as long as you're, you know, it, it interests you and you can commit to it. The only prerequisite that we have is that you come with a with positive energy, positive spirit, and and be willing to work with anybody and do anything that's required. You know, we don't ask for CVs. You'll, you'll be surprised how many people email me their CV, thinking that I need that in order to vet them um, to be a volunteer. And you know, it it's, it 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 shouldn't be like that. Anyone can volunteer. Anybody. I mean, we've got five-year-olds, we've got 72-year-olds. Um, obviously, children that are under 18 either need uh, parental uh, yeah. uh, permission or they need to uh, come and um, come with a, a guardian. I can't be responsible for small children, unfortunately. Right. Um, but I love it. I love it when people come with their kids. It's amazing. I really. There's something really cool when you see little kids getting involved and the parents encouraging them. Because um, volunteering is much more fun than I think people... I think it's going Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. And it's, I think it's people not... think, oh, what a drag. It's going to be full of boring people that have got, you know, they're only volunteering because they've got nothing better to do. And you'd be surprised at how many interesting people there are that come along. And, you know, we've got doctors and then we've got housewives and then we've got, you know, people that are retired and um, we've got kids and we've got all these 119 nationalities. And they're all coming together for a common cause. And that's something, that's another wow moment. You know, I sometimes I stand back and I look at these big groups of people and I think half of you wouldn't be talking to each other if you were all in spinnies doing your shopping. Absolutely not, yeah. You know, and you see these, you know, we put people together. Sometimes teams are put together very strategically. Sometimes groups are thrown together. And one of the cars that we had driving around town had five different nationalities in it. People that never met before um, and, and I, I think it proves that it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter what age you are, what cultural background you have, what religious views you have. If you've all got one goal in mind or one common thread of helping another person, you start to realize that we're all pretty much the same. Exactly. There's not these differences, these differences of, of religion and stuff. It just ultimately, there's a lot that links us. Yeah. And on that note, like, I want to thank you so much for taking the time for doing the work that you're doing. You actually it's helped a me out. Team effort. You actually, you actually helped me out. I didn't help you out. One of our members helped you out. Exactly. But it's a network of people that want to do good things, and it's just about coordinating that. I personally haven't worked. This year we've done, I think it's 123,000 hours this year. I haven't worked 123,000 hours. I don't think, team. you know, if I live to the age of 80, I, I can't be bothered to do the maths, but even if I live to the age of 80, I don't think I would live 123,000 hours. Um, I didn't do that. It's a team effort. There's, it's, I think it's 7,166 engaged volunteers at the moment. These are people that are active in the city doing something to help other people. So it's a team effort. I, I feel very uncomfortable when it's directed at you know me because um, I'm just a bus driver. I've said it before, I'll say best, it again. That's the best way of putting it. Thank you, Lola. Pleasure. Thank you so much.